achieving these achievements? No. We tell the people who try to stop religious education and try to fight religion, it's too late for you. Because religion is God's language, spoken by every nation, generations, and all creation. The spoken language of all of us is unstoppable. And we should use the religion to build our community, to build our society, and to build our country. No matter how they said about Jesus, peace be upon him. Jesus is Jesus. Lady Mary is Lady Mary. Moses is Moses. And we are here to follow them because we love all of them. And this was the teaching, and this is the teaching of Muhammad. So Islamophobia is not for us, but never ever stop us from building our country, our society, our community. It's not for us, it's for the people who write in the newspaper, it's the people who make think tanks, it's not for us, who are here to champion our country, to champion our society, and to champion humanity. And we know where we go. We should consider all the religious institutions as civil society organizations, churches, synagogues, and mosques, and temples. We should not be sidelined by whoever is telling us you are not a civil society organization. So, it's the challenge which we have to meet together to build our great Britain and make it greater Britain. If we talk about peace, we will talk about peace. Peace is a process of education. <coughs> Start from childhood. If we don't educate peace in the school, we cannot achieve peace when we become old people. Peace education, peace building, peace making, peace creation, and peace negotiation and peace and harmony for humanity. It's a process going on and on and on. It's not just a speech. Any one of us will be talking about it. If we talk about communities, yes, we remember Islamic League started 31 years ago, it's 20 pence. One of the success stories of Islamic League is Mr. Salah Sayyid. Can you stand up please, Salah? <laughs> He is one of the people who have been decorated by the Queen with OBE, but now he is the CEO of DEC. Pride for all the Muslim community because you do not believe in xenophobia and the Islamophobia. You believe that you wanted to build a greater Britain. And we have many like Saleh Said in our community, determined to share our belief, not only our belief. We should share our belief with every and each one of us, with every and each citizen, to bring the beauty of our religion, the beauty of the teaching of Jesus, peace be upon him, Lady Mary, Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the beauty of these moral values that we should share. It's a sin 
to keep your belief to yourself. You must share the fruits of your belief with every and anyone whom you know or whom you do not know. And this is the message for us and for the youth. One of the people asked me why you are wearing this outfit. I consulted top man, which was my designer, or what's the other one? New look. <laughs> Since I am at the age of 26, or we can make it 36, I am representing the youth who are not speaking on the podium today. Which well, is actually a failure on us. Jangir spoke about this young boy whom we failed as community, as government, as politicians to protect them. We failed badly because they are British citizens. We should not talk about them that they belong to one religion only. They are British citizens and this is our responsibility as a community, as a society, as a government and as politicians to protect our youth and I am representing them today. You are now with my jeans and my actually uh, new look, uh, whatever it is. <laughs> we have changed the mindset of our donors. When we started something called the Islamic Reflect one years ago, to create humanitarian movement. In 1991, everybody was thinking when the Iran earthquake came, what happened? Shall we give Shia or not? Islamic people were the first to raise 250,000 pounds in less than two weeks at that time. Because we did not look at Shia and Sunni or Sufi and Salafi or Tabligi or Jamaat Islami or whatever it is. We we'll look at the human being. When Haiti came, 22 Muslim charities were responding swiftly to help every and every and each citizen in Haiti. Now we are in Burma, now we are in Nepal, now we are in Philippines, and in China and different places. Here we have changed the mindset of people. Don't. And our challenge now is to change the climate, to be with you, Mary, and with Zach. They are talking about the climate, which is water, rain, and greenery. But we are talking about the humanitarian climate. We must change the humanitarian climate to be more inclusive, to accept South and East, while the North and West are enjoying the leadership. And this is our challenge now, to create social movement, to look at the individual citizens of the country, to build the infrastructure of our society, to fight radicalism, extremism, terrorism with love, compassion, respect, and empowerment. We cannot find extremism by a bullet or gun or death. We have to find it through our religion. It taught us how to deal with people. Global problems. Who stand up for more than one million women and young boys and girls being raped in the Democratic Republic of Congo? Who spoke about a woman or a girl or a young boy once raped in this area systematically raped? We talk about extremism, radicalism, Islamophobia, but we ignore 5 million internally displaced people in DRC and the continuous rape of women and children and young girls in this area. Well, our belief is taking us to share our belief to help everybody. South Sudan suffering from the civil war. They are suffering from malaria. They are suffering from poverty. Where are we? It is where you test, where we test our belief. He said, even in Latin America, the problem of migration, going to America, to the north, to find the land of honey and milk, how have been abused by the traffickers. All this is a part of our mission. Because we are not going to listen to the people for write bad things about good people. 
Because the good people never look about the bad things mentioned by them. Because we are following our prophets, and our prophets are guiding us to do that. What's our role in the UK? To build our society, to build our country, to help our government. Helping by advising, guiding, and supporting. We have a role to play, and our role is to build our country as British citizens. As British citizens. As British citizens. We should not look at ourselves. Our parents came from this area or this area. No, we are all British citizens to build our country and to make it prosperous, not only for the UK, but for humanity. I will end by saying, I celebrate the success, personally, of the anonymous donors from the community who built the Islamic League in 1984, 5 and 6. The unemployed, the elderly, the taxi drivers, and the cleaners, and the doctors, and the professors, and the others, who started putting the first pound. You are here today not to celebrate the 180 million pounds of Islamic relief and the operation, but you are celebrating the success of this old man and old woman who gave the first pound 31 years ago. And the cognition of the contribution, we have to stand up and salute them. They are not here with us, because they don't speak English, they might not be educated enough. But they are the first people who put their money on the Islamic Relief at that time. What role shall we play in Ramadan? Why should we only talk about Ramadan? Ramadan comes once a year, but we live through the year to do what? To share our belief with every and each citizen of the country. Share the belief in action, not in a speech in a mosque, or a speech in a church, or a speech in a synagogue. Share it in action. Show the beauty of our belief for our country here and for humanity. If we don't share our belief, we are not truly believers. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.